Six months to the day after the Orb 3 incident, another ISS resupply mission was launched. This time, it was the uncrewed Progress M27M spacecraft atop the ever-reliable Soyuz rocket. The vehicle lifted off from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan at about 1.10 p.m. local time. This mission was a standard but aggressive flight plan that included a four-orbit rendezvous, meaning the spacecraft was expected to reach the ISS after only six hours. At first, the Soyuz 2-1A performed well, burning all three stages until T plus eight minutes and 45 seconds. At this point, the third stage shut down as planned. Typically, three seconds after, the Progress spacecraft was supposed to separate from the third stage and begin preparations for its trip to the space station. At the time of separation, telemetry was very sporadic and eventually was lost altogether. On the ground, it was unclear what the state of the spacecraft was. Had it completed its antenna deployments or the planned course corrections which would set it on its path to the space station? They had no way to know until they regained communications. So, almost immediately, the four-orbit rendezvous plan was extended to a 34-orbit profile. Until 2012, this profile had actually been standard, and it still served as a more cautious backup in case of any issues. Tracking from the ground revealed that the vehicle had separated at about 10 meters per second too fast, placing it in slightly too high of an orbit. Immediately, the media started to speculate that this had been the cause of the communication issues. But even with this slight overperformance, the spacecraft's orbit was still too close to the atmosphere. Its orbit would decay rapidly, meaning that the spacecraft and its 2,357 kilograms of cargo would likely burn up in the atmosphere within two to three days unless they were able to get control. After four orbits, they still had no luck regaining control, but they had had periods of communication, and what they saw was not promising. Video from onboard the vehicle revealed that it was tumbling at 60 degrees per second, indicating that it did not have control of its attitude, and without control of your attitude, you're not going to be doing any burns to save your mission. The start of the following day brought mixed news. Improved tracking suggested that the orbit would last a few days longer, meaning they had more time, but there still was no progress in regaining control, and they had observed debris around the vehicle. This was a clear sign of what we call a high energy event, or what a normal person would call an explosion. This is hard evidence that something more serious was going on than a simple computer glitch. And at this point, we had to consider the implications for the space station. Cygnus still had not made its return to flight, meaning that the only safe resupply vehicles at this point were the SpaceX Dragon and the Japanese HTV, which was just coming off of its own long hiatus. Luckily, the space station still had supplies for months worth of operations, but things could get hairy if there was going to be a prolonged outage for all Soyuz launch vehicles, because at the time, Progress was the only spacecraft that could refuel the ISS, which is required to maintain its safe orbit. Without fuel to boost its orbit, the ISS is slowed down by atmospheric drag, bringing it closer to the Earth's atmosphere, and while this process is slow, this would eventually lead to it deorbiting and burning up in the atmosphere. By the end of day two, the Russian space agency had to throw in the towel and declare that the mission was lost. The vehicle would tumble out of control for about two weeks until its orbit had decayed enough that it re-entered and burned up in the Earth's atmosphere. But before that even happened, all eyes were on the Soyuz 2-1A rocket. At this point, they were pretty sure that the progress itself had not been the issue. Soyuz rockets, and Progress spacecraft for that matter, are historically exceptionally reliable. But Progress M27M had only been the second flight of this particular version of the Soyuz rocket. All of the data they had was already pointing to theories that the third stage had exploded around the time of separation. This destroyed the stage's communication equipment and generated debris which punctured some part of the propellant system on the Progress spacecraft. This sudden loss of propellant tank pressure would explain the rapid tumbling and also inevitably doomed the spacecraft to slowly fall back to Earth. On June 1st, after just over a month of investigation, Roscosmos announced that a specific cause for the explosion had been identified. They found what they described as a design flaw, specifically something to do with frequency dynamic characteristics, which is something that had been overlooked when they were approving the design for the connection between the progress and the modified Soyuz 2-1A. This statement is vague, but here's what I've been able to piece together. 
Frequency dynamic characteristics refers to the phenomenon of resonance. Every object has resonant frequencies, where small inputs can lead to rapidly growing oscillations. The classic example is pushing a swing where with perfect timing, small pushes can lead to very high swings. For the modified Soyuz Progress structure, shutting down that third stage engine caused a significant oscillation, which somehow aligned with the resonant frequency of the whole structure in just the wrong way. The agency held back on details, but everything I've found points to this causing a water hammer-like effect, where the remaining propellant in the stage is suddenly pushed up and then impacts the top of the tank, causing a massive pressure spike and popping the tank. The aftermath of bursting the tank is more self-explanatory. Despite the somewhat opaque communication of Roscosmos, the issue was identified quickly so it could be remedied. And the even better news was that the older Soyuz Progress rockets, which had not been phased out yet, were unaffected. This meant that the dreaded Soyuz outage had been avoided, and the station would not be at risk of running out of fuel. But a second failure, so close to the loss of Orb 3, was not something that was taken lightly. The station was still down a launch vehicle and short to resupply missions, so we had to make the next one count. Less than a month later, on June 28th, 2015, the eight month anniversary of Orb 3 and the two month anniversary of Progress M 27M, SpaceX was up to bat. But of course, that's a story for another video. Thank you for watching. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero.